What I want to have a look at in this video is the Exchange Online Spam Filters. Now, if we look at the overall protection that Microsoft 365 can provide, as we see in this diagram, you'll see there are a lot of options here. Now, we're going to focus here on the top left-hand side, so we're going to be talking about Exchange Online Protection. So, remember that is part of a solution that can also include uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365, plus a range of other protection options uh, within the suite that can be applied to workstations. But in this case, we're just going to focus on the Exchange Online Protection component, and specifically in that, the spam filtering. Now, when we have a look at this, we see that when email uh, is inbound, it will go through a number of uh, edge protection capabilities. These are provided by Microsoft. This is not something that the user can configure. So we're going to get network throttling, IP reputation, domain reputation, and virus scanning. Now, it's important to note that all mails coming into Exchange Online are scanned for virus using multiple engines. So they don't just use a Microsoft engine, they use uh, multiple engines, some of these from third parties. Now, prior to uh, emails being received, it's very important that you do set up and configure uh, the correct DNS email record. So uh, set up SPF, strongly recommend DKIM and DMARC, since these are going to make the ability to judge emails uh, quality much, much better. So if you can do that, really, really important thing. Now, once it's gone through all the edge protection, you'll see here that it will go through a number of different policies. One of those, which is the one we'll focus on here, is the spam policy. Now, if we have a look at the outbound queue here as well, we'll see that there is an outbound spam policy as well. So it's very, very important to remember that when we go in and have a look at this configuration, there will be an inbound and an outbound spam policy. The other one we'll take a quick look at is the connection policy. So again, spam policy, connection policy inbound, and spam policy outbound are something that the user can actually go in and configure and you do get a number of de defaults as provided by Microsoft. Now the location where we find these policies is in security.microsoft.com so we'll need to log in there as an administrator. Uh, scroll down on the left hand side here so we need to go down until we see the option here for email and collaboration make sure that is expanded and then select the policies and rules. Now in here, you'll see you have threat policies, alert policies, and so on. Select the threat policies option, and you'll see here are the policies that we have. Now we have a number of templated ones provided by Microsoft, and we have our anti-phishing, and here is our anti-spam. So to select the anti-spam, let's go in there, and you'll see that by default, we get uh, basically three policies. We get an inbound, an outbound spam policy, and a connection filter policy. So these are the defaults provided by Microsoft. Now, if you wish to edit any of these, just simply select the option. You'll see the options appear on the left-hand side there. You can go in and edit any of these. You'll notice that we can also go in and create an additional policy for inbound and outbound. So let's just have a drill in and have a look at the inbound spam and just check the settings. Now, Microsoft does have a document here that is their recommended settings for EOP and Defender for Office 365. Highly recommend you go in and you read that and set up your environment to those uh, best practices. But again, as a general, we want to probably lower the uh, bulk email thresh threshold probably to around four again you're probably going to need to make judgments based on your own environment uh, these options here that uh, we see here that are currently off a lot of these microsoft do not have set in their best practices but i would generally uh, recommend that you turn them on uh, they're they're set to be deprecated but i certainly recommend that they be um, turned on the major one I would recommend you turn on, which is not on by default, is this SPF record hard fail. So that means that it's going to treat anything that fails an S SPF check. Uh, it's going to treat that as spam and then move it to either the junk or the quarantine folder. So I certainly recommend you have that um, set on. So a lot of these, like I said, by Microsoft's best practices are off, but I certainly recommend having uh, them on. Now, another one to consider here is international spam and international regions. Uh, by default, Microsoft isn't going to prevent emails of any language or from any regions. It is a best practice I would recommend to go in there and modify that to suit your location. So if you don't expect to receive emails in French or from France, 
then you can go in and exclude that language and that region uh, from the from the ability to receive email so go through that list and normally if you're uh, from an English speaking country then you can generally get rid of a huge amount of countries that you're not likely to expect um, emails from so I certainly recommend you go in and set that up to do that now the actions here are up to you best practice according to Microsoft is to uh, send those messages to quarantine but if you want you can send them to junk email uh, as well all right so the document there highlights how Microsoft makes decisions about things like spam and also phishing emails all right we've also got the capability to uh, enable safety tips that's always a good uh, recommendation to go in and give your user as much support uh, and understanding what's going on providing the safety tips and you'll see here that we've got all those capabilities now down the bottom you can also go in and you can whitelist senders and domains this is generally not best practice you want the email system or the policies to work out what's going on and handle all that for you you don't want to be going in and whitelisting and if you do want a whitelist i'd be suggesting like uh, a transport rule would be a much better approach um, than doing that so again to edit any of these so if we wanted to for example uh, set the uh, spf hard file we would just hit edit edit and we would go in and change that to on and then that policy would be applied now likewise with the inbound there's also an outbound spam policy we can again go in select that we can look at all the options here now it's recommended that you put some sort of sending limit on your use now this is to prevent for example a bot or something getting on their workstation and then doing bulk email so by default there is no restriction on how many emails a user can send per day or per hour the recommendation would be to set this based on your usage so typically you want to prevent users sending more than maybe a hundred emails per hour but you can adjust that uh, to suit when you do beware of the fact that you know some users may send bulk emails or you know be sending a lot of emails on a particular day so again keep that in mind but generally i think a best practice is probably around 100 or so to provide a limit and then set up alerts so that if they are ex if they do exceed that then you will as an administrator get um, alerts about that now the other one we've got here is the automatic forwarding microsoft changed the rules how it deals with uh, forwarding of mail from mailboxes uh, it will basically be blocked now you can go in and change that policy if you want so again if you wanted to allow users to be able to forward we could go in there pull that down and we could set that to uh, basically on where forwarding is enabled so that would be again a not our best practice we want to prevent users from forwarding emails outside their mailbox again better approach is to use a transport or some other method uh, forwarding is very typically what attackers use to uh, send them information once they've compromised a mailbox you've also got the notifications here to send suspicious outbound messages um, and those that exceed limits and you've also got notify users and group uh, if they are blocked so you want that so the important thing is is to have your inbound spam filters set appropriately there are quite a few options there and like I said the Microsoft document here will give you a run through of what those settings it recommends should be my personal opinion is some of those should also be turned on especially especially SPF hard file then you have the outbound spam policy again Microsoft has uh, its recommendations in there my personal recommendation would be to make sure that you do restrict users to sending a limited amount of emails potentially per day most of the time they'll be well under this limit and that is going to prevent you know an attacker being able to use that mailbox for spam now the last one to look at here is the connection filter fairly basic setup you'll see here that we can block and allow IP addresses now again whitelisting anything in here is generally against best practices but if you have no other option or you have a website an e-commerce site that's sending you emails uh, you can whitelist that but again transport rule is probably a better approach to that now the most important one here is when we edit this is this last option here called turn on safe list now safe list is effectively a whitelist that Microsoft maintains of known good reputation mail service so again if we select that that is going to use Microsoft's best practice or Microsoft's white list of emails uh, email servers to allow you to always receive emails from those locations so rather than having to go in and whitelist a whole range of applications my advice to you as a best practice is to go in and turn on this safe list 
Microsoft manages, maintains uh, that list, ensures that all those servers it uh, will select there are good reputation. So it makes your life a hell of a lot easier and prevents you know, having to go in and create all these whitelists. So in your connection filter policy, I would suggest that you go in and turn on uh, this option here for safe lists. So they're the three basic uh, anti-spam policies. Now remember, you can create a new policy here and you can target that policy at a different set of users and so on. You can have you know, multiple inbound, multiple outbound really uh, if you want that. The vice is, is obviously is to keep it as simple as possible. The less, the less complication there is. The other way you can go in and create these policies is by using PowerShell. So you can go in and create a script that will set up the best practices approach or the best practice for yourself in your environment uh, for your anti-spam policies. So remember that these threat policies, anti-spam policies form a part of the defense for uh, Exchange Online. They should be configured correctly to best practices. You will find the best practices settings here recommended by Microsoft. That's a great starting point. And then from there you can scale up and then become more secure. The main call out for me is to make sure firstly that you have SPF hard fail enabled. I think that's a very, very important one. And I would also suggest that in the uh, configuration uh, profile there, you basically make sure that that safe list is uh, checked so that you can take advantage of Microsoft's known good email servers out there. All right. So with that, thank you very much for watching the video.